If there's one sound that signals the arrival of spring, it's this. The annual emergence of Iowa's amphibians, also known as frogs and toads. As frost subsides and warmer weather starts to take hold, every species of frog and toad begin to call out. Nature's annual reminder that springtime is for lovers. So this is their breeding time. So it's mostly the males, actually only the males that are making noise. Um, and they're doing that to try to attract a lady frog of the same species. So they're, these are the, their advertisement calls that we're listening to right now for the chorus frog. In all, 17 species of frogs and toads call Iowa home. And come April, millions of them emerge from a long winter hibernating at the bottom of Iowa's wetlands with species propagation hardwired into their DNA. This is my route from last, what I did last time. Of the nine spots I've got, only three of them actually had any frog calls. At the same time, a few dozen intrepid Iowans set out to record this emergence. Well, I've got to go through and figure out what the wind speed is, and so I just use my Phone. Chasing daylight from April to July, DNR-educated frog call monitors traverse the state's back roads, recording who and what they heard. I believe that's the American toad and chorus frogs that we're hearing in the background. Not a whole lot of them. The wildlife diversity program here at the DNR, um, our responsibility is basically everything you can't hunt, fish, or trap. If you have any guesses on how many species that is, I mean, especially when you take into account insects, it's um, over a thousand. Um, and we have statewide responsibility and three full-time staff focused on um, non-game wildlife. So volunteers are absolutely essential, and especially those that get excited about the idea of contributing to conservation. We absolutely use these data for management decisions. Um, and, you know, that's part of the reason why we like folks to go through training, too, is like, you know, we're really getting them to a place where they're collecting good, biologically sound data. Given the immense size of Iowa's amphibian population and their unique biological sensitivities to their environment, the data this survey collects helps researchers form a better picture of the state's ecological health. One of the reasons it's been going on for so long is that there's been constant concern about um, amphibians. They've been declining for many, many years globally. So this survey is meant to kind of just keep an eye on things and make sure that trends over time for different species aren't going down, that they're staying stable. They, you know, are very sensitive to environmental contaminants. Water quality is an issue. You know, what temperature it is, how much precipitation we get each year. Like, there's a lot of dynamics in their population based on those things. I can have everybody's attention. So we're going to um, start by just doing a little overview of the program, um, and then we'll get into the how do I D stuff. Uh, Since 1991, the Iowa DNR responded to the decline in Iowa frog populations by holding a springtime frog call monitoring program. Volunteers dubbed citizen scientists sign up, are trained, and set loose on Iowa's back roads. Equipped with a set of surveying data points, surveyors visit preset locations to record call types, intensity, the time of day, and environmental factors. I know when the survey started, it was very like if you expressed interest in doing a frog and toad call survey, you just got sent a tape and some data sheets and a sheet to like record what your route, you know, what sites you were going to visit, and that was you just off you go. So it's useful to go through a training and kind of get at least that initial like introduction to the species and um, also how to do the survey. But it's absolutely like there's a lot of great resources online now too. Even though Iowa's 17 frogs and toads are not found statewide, surveyors are trained to distinguish between every call. They're also given a CD for reference in case they get confused while on their route. Eastern Gray Tree Frog. Of course, the brief training and supplemental materials are not a silver bullet, as deciphering from frog calls can trip up experts from time to time. Luckily, frogs emerge at different points in the season, which helps when listening for specific species during the surveying window. 
and then you would record the start time that you started listening. Um, if noise is a factor, like the annoying person that's talking um, while you're trying to listen to frogs. Being dependent on volunteers, the Iowa DNR reiterates every year, the survey is open to anyone, no matter their conservation background or education. The only real requirement is a set of ears and a set of wheels you're willing to drive at night. So this is a unique survey in that it's at night and it's on backcountry roads um, usually, so gravel roads, so it's basically being a creeper, like, you know, driving around on gravel roads and just standing there, you know, listening. And so, you know, some for some people that might be intimidating, but um, so you have to be someone who will enjoy exploring Iowa sort of in a different context. While dozens of Iowans still sign up to take part in the survey, participation numbers have fallen since the survey began. At the same time, Stephanie is the only DNR employee who hosts the training, so ramping up the survey is a balancing act for the organization. Still, Stephanie will do everything she can to fit in anyone who's interested in taking part. For me, it is so incredibly rewarding because obviously I'm meeting my people. You know, these are, these are the people that get excited about frogs. I mean, I've just met so many amazing people through this program um, and who give selflessly of their time for the wildlife of Iowa, and we couldn't do what we do without them.